Hello, welcome to the first and only episode of Mathematical Baking with Toby. Today we're going to be making some delicious ancient Babylonian mathematical tablets. Now, Babylon was an ancient city whose ruins lie in modern day Iraq, and the ancient Babylonian civilization was among one of the first to be able to write. They did this by inscribing things onto clay tablets, which could then be baked in a kiln and set hard and made permanent, or they could just be left uncooked and recycled. Hundreds of thousands of these tablets have been excavated from the ruins of the civilization and many of them relate to mathematics. In fact, many of the tablets found by archaeologists were preserved by chance, being baked when attacking civilizations burned down the buildings in which they were being kept. Before we get baking, we first need to cover our bases when it comes to ancient mathematics. When we're talking about numbers, writing 2, 3, 4 is very different to writing 4, 3, 2. So in our number system, it depends on the position of each digit. Specifically, when we write it like this, it is really saying 3 times 10 and 4 times 100. In fact, we can rewrite this number as being equal to 4 times 10 squared, which is 100, plus 3 times 10 plus 2. Now our number system is in a base of 10, probably because we have 10 fingers and it's easy to start counting over again once you reach 10, but not all number systems have a base of 10. You could pretty much have, you know, whatever number you want. For example, if we had a base of 7, any of the numbers higher than 7 could be rewritten using the digit 7 or lower. For example, if we have 9, that can be written as 1 times 7 plus 2. Now let's talk about the ancient Babylonians. They didn't use a base of 10 or of 7, instead they used a base of 60. Now you might be thinking what kind of a crazy base is 60, but we actually use it sometimes too. For example, telling the time. We've got 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in an hour. So we can probably thank the Babylonians somewhere along the way for that one. For the Babylonians base 60, they had no symbol for zero and the other 59 digits were written as a combination of only two markings in the clay, made with some kind of square-ish tool it appears. They had the wedge for the units and the corner for the tens. They wrote numbers less than 60 like this. This was a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 59. And then when we reach 60, we start again. So one wedge is 60, two wedges could be two sixties, three sixties, ten sixties would be a corner, and fifty-nine sixties would be five corners and nine wedges. If we had this, it would be equal to twelve, and in our base sixty that would be times sixty squared, because it does depend on the position, plus this, which is 31, but that is times 60, and then adding on this, that'll be plus 25. Now all of that will be equal to, and I did this calculation before, 45085. So this is how ancient Babylonian mathematics works. And we're going to use that to see if we can decipher some of the clay tablets. Now, of course, there is a little bit of room for miscommunication here because, say, one wedge could be interpreted as 1 or as 60, 
and something like a corner and two wedges. Because there is no symbol for zero, this could be 10, 11, 12, or it could be 10 60s, so it would be 602. We're not really sure, but we'd have to follow the context of the rest of the calculation to be a bit more confident. Now we're going to take a bit of a break from the maths, a little bit of a mental break, and we're going to do some baking. Instead of using clay, I'm going to make a gingerbread tablet, and then we're going to inscribe some cuneiform onto it. That is the name of this Babylonian writing. So we're going to recreate one of the original tablets which have helped us to really understand how the ancient Babylonians did math. Now in terms of ingredients, I have them laid out here. I've got three cups of white flour, half a cup of brown sugar, two thirds of a cup of molasses, 170 grams of butter, and then some little spices and things. I've got one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of ginger, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, half a teaspoon of salt, and some chili. Um, we've also got this egg here. And we're just going to mix all of these into this bowl. Now that I've finished mixing all of this together, I'm actually going to put it into the fridge for a few hours to let it cool. So I'll see you then. Once it's cooled for a bit, I need to roll it out and get it to about the size of my baking tray. I was aiming for it to be about one centimeter thick. I then put it back in the fridge overnight. I wanted it to be nice and firm for the inscribing process. For my tools, I used a chopstick for the wedge symbols and a cocktail skewer for the corners. This is an image of the original tablet we will be replicating, and here is a clearer version of it. I then made some lines. I'm not going to tell you straight away what the purpose of this tablet is because I want to give you a chance to work it out. You know everything that you need to know, but one hint is that this strange group that repeats in every line with the strange sideways symbols, that isn't a number, that's a word. So we have 10 something 1 10. Then something to 20, something 330, something 440, something 550. I'll tell you what the word is. It's the word for multiplication. This is a multiplication table. And in the top left corner, they've told us that it was the 10 times table. Notice when we have 10 times 6, we get one wedge to represent 60. 10 times 7 equals one wedge and one corner to give 70. 10 times 12 is equal to two wedges for 120. And that's all I had space for. Then I put it in the oven for about 10 minutes at 175 degrees Celsius. Here's what the baked version looks like next to the original. And here it is with a bit more of an authentic look. It's not bad actually. I might offer some to my family, but their collective response will probably be, what the heck is this? But 
I enjoyed making it and there's actually a lot more that can be said about ancient Babylonian maths and a lot more that we can learn so I'd love to make some more videos like this granted that you enjoyed this one so please let me know down in the comments or leave a like and I hope you have an absolutely mathematical day.